Uh, welcome. Let me take you through back titration. Uh, for back titration, we actually have three types of titrations. We have direct titration, back titration, and then redox titration. So in back titration, we have an uh, excess reagent that reacts with two uh, carbon, uh, two either will be one a carbonate and a hydroxide. So in um, back titration, we have excess acid reacting with a carbonate and another base, which would be an hydroxide. Therefore, you are provided with 0 0.5 grams of a divarent metal carbonate M2. I want to talk about the term divarent. Divarent means that this metal M here has got a variance of 2. So divarent means 2, the variance is 2. Monovarent means that the variance is 1. So you need to take care of those terms because they are very, very important when you are going to write the equation. 0 0.5 molar hydrochloric acid solution N and then you are provided with one molar sodium hydroxide solution Q the procedure. Put 0 0.5 grams of M carbonate provided in a conical flask. Add to it 30 centimeters cube of 0 0.5 molar solution N. Solution N, remember, it is hydrochloric acid. Add two to three drops of phenolphthalein indicator. Fill the puree with one molar solution Q. Then finally, titrate against sodium hydroxide until the color just turns pink. Record your results in the table below. So you only need to understand what you have in the burette. What do you have in the burette? What do you have in the conical flask? When you have that understanding, then you will not be able to mix up uh, things. So, so let us go straight and see what we have in the table. So our average volume of sodium hydroxide. So remember, I want to assume that you know how to fill the table. Remember this table has four marks whereby the value, the table must be complete. Just take the value you want to use, you read it, you fill, use it to fill the table. Make sure that you have one decimal place. Make sure that the subtraction here, we call it arithmetic. The arithmetic is done well and you will get your format here and then accuracy. So this is our complete table. So the next question is, calculate the average volume of sodium hydroxide solution used. So the average, you must show you are working. Therefore, we have 5.1 plus 5.0 plus 4.9 divided by 3, which would give us 5.0 uh, centimeters cube. So our average of the carbonate uh, that, that of the sodium hydroxide used is this one. But now you need to understand what happened here. I have said that in back titration, the acid is reacting with two uh, compounds. First, the carbonate was put in a conical flask. 30 centimeters cube was added. After, that, after the reaction is over, uh, the same solution is used to titrate against uh, sodium hydroxide. Right? Therefore, uh, it means the acid is in excess, some of the acid will react with the carbonates and the remaining acid will react with the sodium hydroxide. That understanding is very essential for you to have it. So let us go to question B. Determine the number of moles of the base that neutralized excess acid. So we want to calculate the number of moles that uh, was, was that reacted with excess acid. So we what we have is the volume of sodium hydroxide. We have the volume is five. So the volume, uh, the volume used equal to five point zero centimeters cube. 
But there is an information we have here. The concentration of the solution we are given is one molar per litre. Remember, capital M stands that it means that this is the number of moles in one litre because this one capital M stands for molarity. So, if you understand that, you will say that one capital M implies you should know that it means that it is one mole in a thousand centimeters cube. That's what it means. So we will ask if one mole of sodium hydroxide is, an, is equal to a thousand centimeters cube, what about 5.0 centimeters cube will it give us how many moles? Now this one is five times one divided by a thousand and this one gives us zero point zero zero five moles. So the moles of sodium hydroxide that reacted with excess acid is zero point zero zero five. Very good. Part C determine the volume of excess hydrochloric acid solution N that reacted with sodium hydroxide used. That reacted with sodium hydroxide used. Remember the acid that reacted with sodium hydroxide, the volume, the average volume that we obtain is the acid that was in excess. So we are asking you to calculate the volume of the excess acid. But remember from our previous, we have the number of moles of the uh, base that was reacted. Therefore, the, what is reacting here is sodium hydroxide plus HCl, which gives us sodium chloride plus water. We know the reaction ratio is 1, the ratio to mole ratio is 1 to 1. We know the number of moles of sodium hydroxide is 0 0.0. 0, 0.5. That is the number of moles. So automatically, the number of moles of HCl is 0 0.005. Y. The mole ratio is 1 to 1. Once you have written the reaction, it gives you the mole ratio. Now we know that the number of moles of HCl that was in excess, the, the, the moles of that acid was 0 0.005 moles. So, but the equation asks us to calculate the volume of excess. This is the acid that was in excess that remained after reacting with the carbonate. And then now it came to react with uh, the sodium hydroxide. But remember, we were given the concentration of the acid. We have that 0 .0, 0 0.5 mora HCl. So we know that 0 0.5 capital M means moles in 1000 centimeters. Cube. Now we will find out 0 0.005 moles will give us which volume. Therefore, it's 0 0.005 times 1000. We divide by 0 0.5. Uh, this one will give us 10 centimeters cube. It means that the volume, that the excess volume, was 10 centimeters. Cube. Uh, question D. Calculate the volume of uh, hydrochloric acid that reacted with M carbonate. Hence, determine the number of moles of hydrochloric acid that reacted with the carbonate. So now we want to calculate the volume of HCA that reacted with the carbonate. So you remember very well that the volume that was that it was put into the conical flask was 30 centimeters cube. And now we have in part C we have determined that the volume that reacted with sodium hydroxide is 10 centimeters cube. Therefore, the more, number of moles that the volume, uh, so initial volume was 30 centimeters cube. So 10 uh, is the one that reacted with sodium hydroxide centimeters cube. Therefore, the, num the volume of HCl that reacted with uh, the carbonate is 20 centimeters cube. So that is the volume of HCl that reacted with 
the M carbonate because we have obtained the number of moles at the volume that reacted with sodium hydroxide. The volume that was in excess is 10. But the question was on and asked, hence, hence determine the number of moles of HCA that reacted with the carbonate. The number of moles that reacted with the carbonate, we will obtain it from here. We have the concentration of the acid. So this is the acid. This is 20 centimeters cube of HCl reacted reacted with M carbonate. Now we wanted the number of moles of M carbonate that reacted with the, no the number of HCl that reacted with M carbonate. That is simple. We have the molar we will say zero point five capital M. It is the number of moles of HCl which are in a thousand centimeters cube. So we will find out 20 centimeters cube will give us <coughs> sorry <coughs> will give us which moles. So 20 times 0 0.5 divided by a thousand This one will give us zero point zero one moles. <clears throat> so the more number of moles that reacted with the number of moles of HCl that reacted with the carbonate is zero point zero one moles. So E calculated the number of moles of the M carbonate that reacted with the volume of HCl obtained in part D. So in part D, we obtained that the number of moles that reacted with M carbonate is uh, 0 0.01. That's what we got in part D. But once you write this reaction, you must write the reaction M carbonate reacting with HCl. M chloride CO2 plus water. Therefore, the more ratios you can see is 1 to 2 after balancing the equation. Like I told you, the reason why you are told that the M carbonate is a divariant, you should know, therefore, the variance of M is 2, it will put 2 here. That is the reason why you are told that it is a divariant. So now, moles of the M carbonate, as you can see, is going to be a half that of the HCl because the mole ratio is 1 to 2. Therefore, moles of M carbonate, the carbonate is 0 0.05 moles. Now, determine the F Roman 1, determine the, the relative uh, formula mass, that is the RFM of M carbonate. So, RFM, how do you get that? Remember now we have the number, so moles of M carbonate, we have them as 0 0.005. This is the number of moles of the M carbonate. Uh, we can use this triangle here. Uh, moles mass R F M. Now we have the we are looking for R F M. Therefore R F M is equal to mass divided by moles. The mass of the carbonate was zero point five. That one we were given. You were provided with zero point five grams, and the number of moles we have obtained here is zero. 0 0.005. So when you take, you use your calculator, this one will give you 100. Therefore, the RFM of the M carbonate is 100. Roman 2F, determine the relative atomic mass, uh, that is RAM of M. Now that we have the, so RFM, we have it is 100. So MCO3 is equal to 100. But we have been given 12. C is equal to 12. Oxygen is equal to 16. Therefore, M plus 12 plus 48. 48 is 12 times 3. Will it be 100? 
uh, this one m is equal to 100 minus this which is 60 therefore m is equal to 40 so that is the r a m of m thank you for learning with us we really appreciate you learning in our channel we appreciate a lot thank you let us meet in the next video if you have not subscribed remember to subscribe and there are more more videos in the links in the description so maths chemistry everything they are there check on the description and you will be able to uh, see the videos that are there